Hey everyone, this is My SharePoint Questions and I am Andrew Hess. So I've been getting lots of questions um, through my YouTube, through Twitter, uh, and through Facebook. So however you want to send me a question, please feel free to do that. Um, some people have been asking me for one-on-one -on -one, uh, help. That, that would be really costly on my part. Uh, you know, as a consultant, we used to charge a lot of money for one-on-one -on -one training. So right now I'm not there, uh, maybe in the future, but right now I currently have a job uh, that I work on and I can't give you that one-on-one -on -one help. Although you can ask me a question and I'll create a video for you. So that's what I've been doing. I do create Power Apps professionally. That's what I do as a job. I, I work in the Power Platform. I do Power Apps, SharePoint, Power Automate, Forms. That's what I do every day. And on the weekend, I create these videos. So if you have a question and I can create a video for you, then I'll do that. I'm gonna support you as much as I can. I'm only one person right now, so thank you guys for watching. I'm almost to 1,000 subscribers, so thank you everybody. Let's get into today's video. Today, what I want to do is create a, I want to create a filter for my list. So my filter is going to be a drop down, and I'm going to base it off this label here. And I'm probably going to color code this label. So let me color code it real quick. And all right, so I color coded my label column here. This is just a single line text in SharePoint. So if we look here, I just have a new column called task label, and it's a single line text. So what I want to do is I want to be able to filter in on it. But also, when we create a new task, it's actually a single line text, and you can just fill this in. I want to populate this filter uh, based on the label selection. So there's tons of ways to do this, right? So when I show you these videos, I'm not saying this is the best way. I'm giving you different options. There's so many videos online, but this is one way that you can do it, and this is how maybe I do it. So if I just had one drop down, and the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a collection. All right, so the way that I do this is I break it down for myself and I make it more simple. What we wanna do is we wanna put it on the on visible property of screen two, which is our screen here, but I'm gonna break it down into a button. So we're gonna put down a button, right? And what we wanna do is we wanna collect, but we wanna clear collect. So the difference between collect and clear collect is when we collect, we're adding it to our collection. When we're clearing collect, we clear the data and then recollect. So we want to clear, collect, and we want to name our, our collection, and we're going to name it uh, My Labels. So this is just a name I made up. This is not a SharePoint list or anything. It's just a name that we're making up. And when we collect, we want to collect all of the labels. So we're going to do a for all statement. So for all of My Labels, or my tasks, actually, my tasks. That's the name of my SharePoint list. So in SharePoint, it's my tasks. For all of my tasks, we wanna collect the task label, and that's the name of our, of our column. So if we go back here, task label, that's the name of our column. So now, we've cleared the, we're clearing the collect, collecting my labels, that's the name of my collection, for all of my tasks, we're getting the task label. So we'll press that button. And we'll check out our collections. We have my labels and it's it's the column in here is called value. So we have all of our collection. And if you notice that it's actually um, repeating, right? Like so it collected main, planning, planning, testing. So if we look in here, main, planning, planning, testing. But that's the problem, right? We don't want it to duplicate each one. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a, a distinct statement. So this is, um, we'll just kind of break this down, make it easy for us. So this is collect all. And then now we're going to create another button. And this is going to be distinct. And if you know anything about um, collecting data, distinct is a function where you you know you remove duplicated values. So let's look up distinct in YouTube so or in Google. Distinct power apps. You know, I have a lot of background in SQL and, and collecting data, 
But distinct, you know, right here, it says it evaluates a formula of cross each record of a table and returns one column of data of the results with duplicate values removed. So we're gonna remove all that duplication. That's what distinct does. One big thing to notice is it says the name of the column is result. So the column from distinct function is actually gonna be called result. When it was uh, in the collect function, it was called value. So we gotta remember that it's now called result. So we're back to Power Apps. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear collect the collection. So this is the name that we're gonna give it. We're gonna give it my distinct label. So this is the name that we're giving it. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Now the item is the distinct value of my labels. So that's what we called our first collection, my labels. And then we have a couple options, right? We wanna choose value. So value was the name of our column there. All right, so now we have dis uh, clear collected my distinct labels, distinct my labels, comma value. So that's the name of our column, the value. So we're gonna collect all, distinct. We're gonna check out our file and our collection. So if we go to my distinct labels, now we only have three collected. And that's exactly what we want for now. So this will be my distinct labels dot result. So it's it's dot result because if we go back in here, this is just what Power Apps is doing. So here they call it value. You see the column is called value. Here in my distinct labels, they called it result. So if we go back, we press play, we have three options. And, and there's still more work to be done because I'm gonna show you how we're gonna filter here. So now, if we wanna filter uh, this gallery, now there's many different ways to do this, but for this uh, scenario, I'm gonna show you how I would simply filter this. Filter my tasks, uh, the logical test, so this is, um, our drop down. Let's give our drop down a name. I like to name it when I start using it in other things. So drop uh, labels. So we're going to say our drop down, our drop labels dot selected dot. And so this time it's result because that's what it was in the column is equal to. And we got to look at SharePoint. What's that column called? The task label It's equal to task label. All right, so now with our drop down, you can see that it's filtering based on our task label. All right, so now let's go on and create a new task. So we'll create a new task. Um, email user about information. And we'll give it a date. Actual time will be 30 minutes. It's a long email. Um, Bart Simpson, now this time I'm going to create a new task label. I'm going to call it email. So we'll submit. Now you'll notice when we collect again, so what we, we didn't get the collection there yet, but when we collect again and we do a distinct, you'll notice we have a new selection. So email. So now we have a new one in there. Isn't that neat? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to Notepad. I'm just gonna go to Notepad. So in Notepad, we're gonna paste that in. I'm gonna put a semicolon and that depends on your location. Some people don't use semicolons there. It depends on where your Power Apps is. And so now I've combined both of those columns. So I combined Collect All and Distinct. I'm gonna take that I'm gonna move it in screen two on visible. All right, so screen two on visible. So let's remove that distinct. So now we have um, main planning testing email. Let's create another new task. Um, uh, let's just call it a uh, phase one, you know, 
outer join just thinking data here so actual time is going to take eight hours resource Superman's going to do it and we're going to call this uh, phase one and submit all right so now we're back on our screen right and if you look it's already populated it's already populated because on the on visible property of this screen we're collecting and then we're doing the distinct function all right so the issue is now we don't have the option to see everything now the way that I do this it's just the way that I do it I'm not saying this is the best way this is one way on the screen too what we're gonna do is we're gonna collect a blank we're gonna collect my distinct labels and we're gonna collect a result so curly back a result and we're gonna collect a blank value all right so now when we come into new task and we go back we've now collected a blank value in our items property of our gallery we're gonna say if if drop labels dot selected dot result equals blank then we'll collect we'll show everything my tasks else we're gonna show our our drop down so we have main planning testing email phase one and our blank which shows everything okay now that we have all of our selection here we got one more thing to do and that's to sort our items property in the drop down so sort my distinct labels dot result by the result ascending look at that so now when someone first comes to this page it's going to be sorted with the blank and they're going to see everything then if they want to do email they can sort by email main phase one planning testing and then so let's add one more task so let's call this um secondary task added we're just gonna you know i'm just gonna come up with some things um 30 days spider-man and this one is going to be called secondary task and now i'm going to submit so now we've come back in here we now have it already added to our drop down we can choose to sort uh, filter by secondary task email main and a blank and that's how i populate a drop down to filter by on a on a screen and so people can actually populate this drop down on their own using a single line text now, i realized this was pretty uh difficult but I, I feel like i broke it down as much as i can if you want to know how i did the colors here i just kind of um did it if then so if i added another um so if we come in here and we format text you can actually see i just did you know if it's this item then you do that um uh, this item the task label equals phase one then we want a new color a new color see here we want a new color like that so now we have phase one with a new color that's all I did for the coloring was I just did uh, you know an if then statement or there's no then in this but that's just kind of me talking but if you know this label equals main it's this color if it equals planning if it equals phase one else it's this color so that's how I change the color of our labels so thank you guys for watching if you're enjoying this, if this is helping you, please like and subscribe. I feel like we're, we're getting somewhere. I know I'm helping a lot of people. Thank you everybody for their comments. Uh, thank you guys for your support. I'm almost to 1000. Please like and subscribe if you like my work. Thank you. See you next time.